Morning. It's always a, st a little bit of fighting stage fright when I come up here. Um, Um, start off, I just want to say I'm familiar with mechanics. I'm not. Um, if you want to talk about chemistry, you want to talk about how explosions happen within the cylinders that power the pistons of the engines, I can, I can do that. But the actual parts of the engine, I got nothing. But let's go to the explosion, the fun part. Uh, with that, there are three key elements that you need. You need fuel, oxygen, and a spark. Those three elements. Now, what does that have to do with these verses? Uh, I'd say that the reason I picked these verses in the beginning was back when I was in high school, when I played soccer and cross country, whenever I taped my socks or my shin guards, I'd write these two verses on my ankles. Uh, and I didn't really realize it then because I was young. Looking back on it now, I realize that these two verses go hand in hand. Um, and I'll get to that a little bit, but before I get there, I want to define courage and faith. Courage is defined as fearlessness in the face of danger. Yet, when I have, whenever I talk to anyone who has either been a soldier, who has been a missionary in an unfamiliar setting who's been a conscientious objector, who's been a businessman or woman, or is becoming a parent. The trend that comes to mind when they talk about their actions is not that they're being courageous and avoiding fear. It's that fear is very present in what they do still. Um, and if you think about it, it's, a, it's fairly terrifying to do all of those things. So I don't think that courage being fearlessness is an accurate description. I'd say courage is taking action in spite of fear. Now, this is very present in those previous examples that I've talked about, specifically being with soldiers when they have to be on the front lines or missionaries who are going to unfamiliar areas not knowing who they can talk to, how they can talk to, the social interactions there, conscientious uh, anxious objectors who are standing up for their beliefs in spite of being hounded by all that's around them. Business people being afraid of making a poor decision but still being able to make it. Or first-time parents, second-time parents, or third-time parents, having a kid. That's terrifying. So I've been told. <laughs> but they're all necessary. So there's also another little aspect to courage. And that is, when I look at courage, courage without fear, what is courage without fear? Action. Nothing more. Just every day. Courage without Action is a wish or a dream. But why do courage in the first place? There has to be a spark, initiation, a motivation, a reason. And so courage, I would say, is defined as overcoming fear with action in response to a motivation or a purpose. Now faith. This is the fun one and the hard one, in my opinion. Um, I would say that faith, as described in Hebrews 11.1, 1, is being sure of what is unseen, or sure of what you hope for and certain of what is not seen. In Matthew 8, 5 through 13, the centu uh, and Luke 7, 1 through 10, the centurion had confidence in, the un uh, in Jesus' miracle without needing proof. When asked, 
uh, he said, I don't need your, pr- I don't need proof because I'm a man under authority. If I tell this man to go one way, he will do it. If I tell a man to go there, he will do that. All you need to do is say the word, and I know my servant will be healed. And in Mark 5, 25 through 34, the sick lady touched Jesus' cloak, thinking, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. In Mark 10, 46 through 52, Bartimaeus received his sight for believing. In Luke 17, 11 through 19, 10 lepers were healed just by believing. And the list goes on. Most healing miracles are this way. Hebrews 11 again reminds us that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It goes on to list Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and others throughout the biblical narrative who showed faith uh, and showed that they acted in a way that they were confident in God's promise. Now, second aspect of faith. How is it described? When Jesus' disciples were unsure why they couldn't cast out the demon, Matthew 20 and 21, because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a must, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible. This seems contradictory, because Jesus said, you have such small faith, but yet he describes a mustard seed, which is indeed a small seed. The thing, though, is a mustard seed is only temporarily small. Mustard seeds have a germination and growth period of 30 days to reach maturity and another 30 days between the, before they reach flowering and seeding. And they spread like multiple rows and dandelions. The seed may start out small. It's meant to grow, and it's meant to spread. That's what faith is supposed to be. Now let's go back to the engine. How does the engine fit into this faith, courage, dynamic Um, let's look at what causes the car to move. Fuel. What causes action? Courage. So then, arguably, courage is the fuel. But then, what causes the fuel to turn into the explosion that stands for the car to move in the first place? What is the motivation for courage? Faith. Faith justifies courage for action. So the spark is faith. And the fuel is courage. Where is the oxygen? The oxygen is fear. What? The reason I say that is, in order to have courage, you must overcome fear. Fear must be a part of the equation. And interestingly enough, if I overcome and I show courage within an action based off of faith, next time I do it, I'm not so afraid of it. It's almost as if faith eats the courage or eats the fear. And so that grows the faith. So then if fear is oxygen added to the system, what would look like logically is that the spark would feed off of the oxygen which ignites the fuel to cause the action of the car or faith feeding off the fear to cause the courage to provide the action of what we're doing in life. Now, if you'll notice that this is kind of a cycle a little bit because as I overcome my courage or as I do action, that justifies my, or provides reasoning for me to do it again, which that fear feeds the faith, which then powers the courage, which causes action, which overcoming that fear then cycles back into feeding more faith, and the faith keeps growing in that cyclical nature. That's how we get mustard seeds growing into 
wild forests. A good example of this in the scripture is when Peter tried walking on water in Matthew 14, 22 through 36. All the ingredients are there. When Peter, or Peter and the disciples were in the boat, they looked out and they saw Jesus walking to them. Jesus said, have courage, do not be afraid. He already commanded them to have courage, and he recognized that fear was very evident because they were in the middle of a storm. They're terrified. If you've been on rickety boats like that, you'd be terrified too. He, Peter says, can I walk out to you? Christ says, come. And as Peter stepped on the water, Peter started walking towards Jesus. Peter was walking on water. Because if he just sank, he'd grab the boat and stay right there. But he just kept walking for a little bit. The thing was is that the fear around him drew him away from his focus, from his faith, from Christ. And when he did, when that happened, he started to sink in the water. O too much oxygen added to a fire can blow out a fire. Too much wind added to a fire can blow out a fire. Upon this, when Christ rescued him, Peter, he said, You have little faith. Why do you doubt me? It's kind of almost like Peter's driving the car when he's 16, learning how to drive, and Christ is sitting next to him in the passenger seat saying, Hey, when you stick shift, you got to hit the clutch and you got to move this. And they get to the stop sign, and Peter stalls out, and he starts to panic. And instead of getting it together and keep going, he pulls over to the side of the road all shaken and scared, and he goes, I can't do this. Help me. Switch out. The crazy thing is we can do that right now. We can have that faith-courage relationship with Christ right here, right now. The question is, is that when it starts to stall in the middle of the intersection, what do I do? Do I have the confidence to press forward? Will I take action given the opportunity? Or will I allow the intake to overpower that which has started? Basically, do I have confidence in God, in Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to deliver on what they have promised? And sadly, in all honesty, honestly, too often I have to say that I don't. I fail. Now, those are kind of abstract, kind of up there questions. Um, <clears throat> what does that look like every day, maybe? What does that look like for the church? Maybe it's, what skills do I have that I can help serve? And do I have the confidence to do that? If I pray for something, if I pray for healing, if I pray for deliverance, do I expect results? Or do I just go through the motions? Some places I've been around the world, can I really rely on God to provide my food the next day? If I ask him a question, will he answer? Almost every college student I know has had this thought in their mind at some point. Is there any hope for my future? What about making ends meet? A lot of men and I who struggle with pacifism are here. What about the evil in the world around me? And this one's a little bit more personal. God, I'm incredibly depressed. Help. It's a hard journey to walk. And I don't got answers all the time. Most of my answers are wrong. Let's pray. Abba, Father, 
thank you that you are God and that we are not. For I am flawed. For we are flawed. Thank you, Lord, that you provide us a way to grow in relationship with you, in walking with you. And it is challenging. Hold our hands. Guide us. And when the winds blow around us, as in P with Peter, or whenever the engine just dies on us, just talk, help us through it, talk us through it, so that way we will become more and more focused on you and be more aware of what you do in our lives. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for this week. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen.